Hello, so in today's video, we're going to be going over number 435 from Leet Code, which is called non-overlapping intervals. And the problem statement is that given a collection of intervals, we want to find the minimum number of intervals we need to remove to make the rest of the intervals non-overlapping. So let's look at example number one so you could better understand what this means. So let's say we have the intervals 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, and 1, 3. So again, we want to find which intervals we need to remove to make the rest of the intervals non-overlapping. And we want to find a minimum number of intervals. So just by looking at this, we can see that it would be most optimal to remove the last interval. Because by removing the last interval, we would only need to remove one interval to leave the rest of the intervals non-overlapping. Because intervals 1, 2, and 3 are non-overlapping. So we would remove this one, the interval from 1 to 3. Okay, let's look at example number 2. So here we have three intervals that are from 1 to 2. Now we notice that if we just remove one of these intervals, we still have two intervals that are overlapping. So we would need to remove two of these intervals from 1 to 2 in order to have a non-overlapping interval. So let's look at example number 3 now. So we have the intervals 1 to 2 and 2 to 3. So here, we don't need to remove any intervals because already they're non-overlapping. So thus, the answer would be 0. Okay. So given these examples, we can kind of come up with two questions we want to answer. First, we want to determine a criteria for whether two intervals are overlapping. And to determine this, let's look at an example. So let's say we had this. So we have an interval from 1 to 3 and an interval from 2 to 4. So here we can see that the two intervals are overlapping. And the reason why is because the start point of the second interval is less than the end point of the first interval. And so if we look at an example of two intervals that are not overlapping, then we can see that over here, the start point is greater than the end point of the first interval. So again, our criteria is that the start point of the second interval or of just one of the intervals needs to be less than the end point of the another interval. And then we know that those two intervals are overlapping. Okay, so now that we've figured out how to determine if two intervals are overlapping, let's move on to the second question we should address, which is which interval should we remove? Because if we do have two overlapping intervals, to get to the final answer, we need to have no overlapping intervals. So we would have to remove one of them. And in this case, where we have just two intervals, interval from one to three and an interval from two to four, it doesn't matter which interval we remove. Because if we remove this first interval from one to three, then we get one non-overlapping interval. But then if we decide to remove the second interval from two to four, then we also get one non-overlapping interval. So in this case, it just doesn't matter which interval we remove. However, if we were to add a third interval, and let's say it's from three to five, then it does matter which interval we remove. Because if we remove this first interval from one to three, then we're left with two overlapping intervals from two to four and three to five. And then we would have to remove another one of these intervals and then we would get an answer of needing to remove two intervals. But then if we were to remove the second interval from the beginning, then we would get two non-overlapping intervals. And so then the answer we would get would be one. So it does matter which interval we remove. And so we need to figure out a way to determine which inter by removing which interval will we get the most optimal answer. And so, at first, it might seem intuitive to sort by starting point. And so the idea behind this approach is that sort by starting time, so then the first interval we look at would be this interval, then this interval, then this interval. And at each interval, we wanna check if it overlaps with the previous interval. And if it does, we wanna remove it. So in this example, again, we would start off with the interval from one to three, 
then we would do the interval from two to four. So then we check if the interval from two to four overlaps with its previous interval. And since it does, we get rid of it. And then we move on to this interval. Then we check if the interval from three to five overlaps with the previous interval. And it doesn't, so then we're done. So in this case, we're getting the right answer of needing to remove just one. So based off this, sorting by starting point does seem like a good idea. However, we should try one more example to be sure. So let's try another example. So let's have intervals from one to five, two to four, and four to five. So again, let's try this sorting by starting point approach. So the first interval we look at would be this interval. The next one would be this interval. And then we check if the current interval we're on from two to four overlaps with the previous interval. And since it does, we get rid of it. Then we look at the next interval, which is from four to five. And then we check if it overlaps with its previous interval. And it does, so we get rid of it. So in this scenario, we would get an answer of needing to remove two intervals. However, if we were to remove just the first interval, we would get two non-overlapping intervals remaining. So in that case, the answer would be one. So here, the approach of sorting by start time doesn't seem to work. So let's try thinking of another approach. And the pretty much the remaining approach would be to just try sorting by end time. So let's try doing that. So in this example, if we sort by end time, we would be looking at this interval first because it has the smallest end time. And so then the next interval we would look at would be either the first interval or the third interval. So let's just say we looked at the first interval. So in this case, this interval from one to five overlaps with our previous interval from two to four. So we get rid of it. And then we look at this interval. So the interval from four to five does not overlap with the interval, interval from two to four. So we keep it. And so in this case, we're getting the right answer. So here we can see that this approach of sorting by ending points does seem to work. And it is actually the right way to solve this problem. Let's go over why this greedy method works. So the reason why this method works is because, again, let's go back to if we had two intervals, overlapping intervals. So if we choose to remove the interval with the greater ending point, then we're leaving more space for other possible intervals. If we get rid of this interval and we just have the first interval, then other future non-overlapping intervals could start anywhere from here to anywhere after, right? Because it can, there can be an interval from here, there can be an interval from here, and so on. And it wouldn't overlap with this first interval that we keep. However, if we remove this interval, then possible intervals that are non-overlapping can only start from this area, this place, and forward. So it can start from less places than it can if we were to keep this first interval. So by this logic, if we have two overlapping intervals, it's always better to get rid of the interval with the higher ending point because then we're leaving, leaving more possibilities for other intervals to non-overlap with the remaining interval. So I'm going to be coding the answer to this problem in C++. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create two variables. The first one is the size, so how many intervals there are. And then we'll also create a variable for the amount removed, which we will initialize to zero. And then we know that if the size is less than or equal to one, we can return zero because that would mean that there's only zero or one interval. And in that case, we don't need to remove any intervals to make the rest non-overlapping. So then the first thing we wanna do is we wanna sort by endpoint. So let me write the code for that. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a variable called previous end, and we're gonna initialize it to the ending point of the first interval. And then we're going to loop through the rest of the intervals in a for loop. And in this loop, we know that if the current interval's start is less than the previous interval's end, then there's an overlap. So that would be if intervals of i of 0 is less than previous end, and then we would know that we can increment amount removed by one because then we'd be removing one of the intervals. And then we know that if there is no overlap, then we would have to update previous end. 
So else previous end is equal to the current interval's endpoint. And then at the end, we would return amount removed. And so if we try submitting this, we should get that it works. And so that's how you code it in C++.